the faith. God told Abraham that he would be a father of a great multitude. Abraham had no children at this time, and yet by faith he knew that this would be true. Even though he was childless, he had confidence to use his new name, Abraham, which means father of a great multitude. His circumstances did not prevent him from declaring those things that be not as though they were. Faith in the word of God was his evidence that he had a son and that he was indeed the father of a great multitude. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Jesus has promised to uphold you. Therefore, believe that you will be upheld. He will fulfill this promise to you as verily as he fulfilled his promise to Abraham. You must believe in his promise and declare your confidence in him, believing that he will continue to give you uninterrupted victory over all the power of the enemy forever. Just as Abraham's faith in the promise of God was imputed to him for righteousness, so will righteousness be imputed to you for your faith in the exceeding great and precious promises of God. It is through faith that you know something is true even though you have not yet seen it. To be justified means to be given the righteous life of Christ. His life is everlasting. His life never sins. Even though you have not yet lived tomorrow, it is through faith that you know that through the Holy Spirit, His everlasting, victorious life will be abiding in you tomorrow and forever. He shall give you another Comforter, that He may abide with you forever. It is this faith in His Word that allows the grace of God to cause this to be true. According to your faith, be it unto you. And I will betroth thee unto me forever. Yea, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness, and in judgment, and loving kindness, and in mercies. I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness, and thou shalt know the Lord. When one marries, he intellectually knows that it is physically possible for him to go back to his old girlfriend. However, in the wedding ceremony, he still publicly declares that he will be faithful until death do us part. If he told his bride that he could not say or know for sure that he would still be abiding faithfully with her tomorrow or six months from now, she would have reason for concern. However, in his marriage vow, he confidently declares that he will always remain faithful to her. Jesus has made a vow to us, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And because thy vows are upon me, O God, I will render praises unto thee, for thou hast delivered my soul from death. Will not thou deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living? Because of his vows or promises to us, we can, with assurance, declare with David, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. This was the faith of our father Abraham, and this is the faith of Jesus. It is the faith of the saints who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus.